Row the boat like the end of 2018, and we may have something, PJ. The Big Ten joins our schedule rankings here at Mark Roger TV, the voice of college football. So if you love the game that we love, you're a hardcore college football fan, then lock it in right here uh, for the best in discussion, debate, and analysis from myself and the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the nation on a daily basis. I'm ranking the schedules. I'm also responding to your comments over on Patreon. So what you do here is you just make your comments here, and then we have a fun time either acknowledging, man, you're a smart fan, you've got some great insight and comments, or saying, hey, you really challenged me on that point, that's interesting, and you've got some great insight, or you're a moron, and this is why, A, B, and C. And I uh, will deliver those comments and uh, provide the live stream in which we will have uh, engagement on the live chat and your calls directly to me uh, on Patreon at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So again, uh, lock it in here and join us on Patreon where we're building our community there as well. All right. This is the 61st most dis- difficult schedule in college football. It's the easiest schedule in the Big Ten. It belongs to P.J. Fleck in Minnesota. All right. So they've got the three non-conference games in the Big Ten. So the Big Ten plays Nine conference games. Minnesota belongs to the Big Ten Western Division, which I have a little bit more respect for that division than most people do. There are no elite programs in that division. There's no Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Oklahoma. But there's also not those programs in either Pac-12 division. I'm not putting Washington there. Or in the um, ACC Coastal. And I think you've got a balance of teams at the top that are pretty darn good, uh, aside from Illinois and what we thought was Minnesota, but they're playing much better and played an excellent uh, brand of football in November and January or December of last season when they won the bowl game over Georgia Tech by 24 points to finish at 7-6. and six. Uh, None of us, I don't think, expected Minnesota to make it to postseason play early November. Uh, And then they pulled off some big wins against the likes of Purdue and Wisconsin, and they played Northwestern within a score. And uh, again, they beat Georgia Tech uh, to finish at seven and six. All right. They also had a nice win in September against Fresno State before we knew how truly good the Bulldogs would be as the Mountain West Conference champions. This time, Minnesota travels out to Fresno State on September 7th after they play a difficult game against South Dakota State on August 31st. So Minnesota, yes. In terms of Power 5 play, not a difficult non-conference schedule compared to their their rivals in the division that have to play really good teams and uh, throughout the Big Ten that play uh, difficult Power 5 teams. But uh, kind of under the radar in terms of non-conference scheduling. South Dakota State at Fresno State, tough trip. Georgia Southern at home. Then, open date to get ready for Purdue on the road. So that's important. That's good for Minnesota. Rev up for the Big Ten nine-game schedule with a bye week. And then at Purdue, September 28th, Illinois should win that game. Nebraska at home. They got a bludgeoned, just trampled by the Huskers last year uh, at home. Uh, no, actually, that game was in Lincoln. So they've got Nebraska at home. They've got Rutgers on the road. They've got Maryland. Who knows who's going to win these games? They should beat Rutgers in Illinois. They better, or they're not getting back to a bowl game. Then they've got an open date before a very difficult closing stretch for Minnesota. Listen to this. The bye week on November 2nd. And then Penn State at Iowa, at Northwestern, Wisconsin for Paul Bunyan's axe that they own for the first time in 15 years after their big 22-point win against Wisconsin last year on the road. This time they get Wisconsin at home, but after a really rough stretch, think about Minnesota playing Penn State, Iowa, Northwestern, and Wisconsin. They better have uh, their bowl eligibility wrapped up before that. In the Eastern Division, so this is always something to keep an eye on when, when you're judging and ranking and evaluating schedules. In all the Power Five conferences, aside from the Big 12, where everyone plays everyone, you need to know who are these teams playing in the other division. This is critical in every division, every conference, but especially in the Big Ten in the Western Division. Who do they have to play in the East? 
Well, Minnesota gets off pretty light. No Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. They do play Penn State at home. They've got Maryland and Rutgers. So pretty light touch for Minnesota. One of the reasons why they have the easiest schedule in the Big Ten. Number 14, easiest in the Big Ten. Number 61 in the nation out of 70 teams. Minnesota at 7-6, and 3-6 and six in the Big Ten last year. We'll finish this year. My projection right now, not my final prediction, my projection in May. The Gophers go 6-6 six and six and lose to Fresno State on the road and go 4-5 and five in the Big Ten. My projection, want to hear from you, want to get your Minnesota a record this season, leave it down in the comments section right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Check out the library videos. If you're joining us for the first time or have just uh, surveyed a few videos here and there, dive into the videos. I think we'll win you over that you need to be here if you love college football. We will see you next time with schedule number 60.